talking about the winds of change, the art of investing in volatile crypto assets in 2018. I would like to invite onto the stage Brad Yasser, who is an entrepreneur, an investor, a mentor, and an ad advisor, who has started and bootstrapped several companies from inception to maturity over the past 20 years. He's currently the co-founder and managing partner of Crowd Mentor, a strategic crowdfunding advisory firm focusing on ICOs, cryptocurrencies, blockchain, and token-powered organizations. He's also a very good friend of mine that I've gotten to know over the past year or so through dt &E, and I'm very excited to hear him speak today. Can you please give Brad a very warm welcome to the stage? Well, hello everyone, my name is Brad Yassar. For those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, also the co-founder of Blockchain Investors Consortium. And I am on stage today because um, I keep hearing the same question over and over again. What's going on with ICOs? What's going on with investors? And can I get investment for my ICO? Well, how many of you in this room are fundraising right now? Let's see a show of hands. Only, only that many? Okay. How many are planning to fundraise this year sometime? Okay, much better. Um, there is... Uh, there is a lot of investment going on. The, the, the difference has been the type of investors that are looking at your deals, and we're gonna talk about that. Um, I, you know, after Naomi's introduction, I don't think I need to go over this. Uh, Crowd Mentor does strategic advisory. Uh, we help uh, blockchain projects uh, reach their goals. Now, evolution of crypto investing. The early stages of crypto investors were technologists. And a lot of people didn't catch on the change when it started happening, but the early investors that invested in Bitcoin um, were not professional investors. They didn't look at uh, a lot of the traditional metrics. They didn't really require equity for their investments. They were just excited to support the idea, support the movement. Now, in the past two years, that has changed. Um, Yes, that has changed because of this. And I have a video here, hopefully it'll play, excellent. I love this um, video, short video, that shows the velocity of uh, ICOs in the past four years. And most of you probably have seen it, but I like playing it because you don't realize how slow things were in crypto investing until mid-2017, until you watch this. If you watch it carefully, there's half a dozen, then a dozen projects. We have Ethereum, DAO. Still, this is all manageable. And these are pioneers who took huge risks. And now it starts happening. Watch it. Boom. That's the velocity I'm talking about. So with this kind of um, growth in the market, of course, the type of investors that are looking at your deals have, have changed. And it's, it's not good or bad, it's just the criteria they look for has changed with them. Uh, early investors were technologists, they looked at the technology, they looked at white papers, they wanted to see a solid technical team and a vision to change the world. Um, of course, they made money with Bitcoin, that got rolled into Ethereum, and then once Ethereum reached levels where people made a lot of uh, money and created a lot of wealth, they started diversifying. So I don't want to call it easy money, but there was a lot of uh, crypto investments available in crypto for ICOs. And that's what we saw in the end of 2016 and 2017 come into the market, come into your ICOs. Then angel investors and VCs started taking interest. When they started seeing millionaires and billionaires being created by Bitcoin and, and uh, Ethereum, suddenly the more traditional, still very high risk tolerant investors got interested in the space and started investing. And that's the ICO boom of 2017. You got VCs converting some of their uh, available funds into the crypto space, maybe still taking equity, but really backing the early ICOs. And that fueled the $6 billion that came in. 
and there was some profit taking at the end of 2017, just like we know. Now, in 2018, um, the winds have changed. The, the, the free money that was flowing from one crypto project to the other, one crypto asset to, to your ICO or, or your friend's ICO that raised $50 million is no longer there because those people actually took some profits out and institutional investors started coming in. What does that signify, you know, what does this mean for someone fundraising right now? Well, two things. You need to change your proposition. You, you can't still go to someone with a white paper, maybe a very early stage product, and, and expect them to uh, jump on your ICO. Th those days are behind us. And, you know, in a way, it's, it's for the better because this eliminates a lot of the pump and dump more s projects that could be considered scams because people are paying attention to what you're doing. And so you need to move your early stage proposition to angels, VCs, or institutional investors like family offices, if you have access to them, to incorporate a, a better alignment. And that usually happens with equity because everyone in the traditional space understands with equity they're locked in for longer than six months or three months. It's, you know, if investing in tokens is like dating, uh, getting equity is more like a marriage, you know, you're, you're in it for the long run and you want to grow old together until such time comes that there's a liquidity event. So with that in mind, um, if you want to raise funds right now and you need seed capital, you need to think about equity first. Like how can I incentivize my seed investors with equity and better partnership alignment, better terms uh, to get the seed round? And then of course, you need to have a very aggressive um, pre-sale strategy where terms commensurate with the risk that uh, your project has. So if you have a solid team, you have an amazing product, you're gonna get an investment and you can do it with uh, more founder-friendly terms than just having to go and um, you know, give the farm away. But if you don't have those things, you need to calculate that risk and put it into your model so that you're not alienating uh, high risk tolerant uh, in, in investors by not giving them the right term sheet. Um, another thing that's very important that was somewhat overlooked in the past two years in the investment space is a real business model, revenue. Um, I, I, I'm an active investor. I've invested in about 20 deals in the past year and every time uh, I had to ask what the business model was. Like, how are you gonna have cash flow coming into your business? How are you gonna make this work? How is this gonna uh, be sustainable from a business model? Of course, the tokenomics is important and, and the distribution and, and the investment, but aside from that, how is this gonna stand on its feet? And more and more, the projects that are outlining this and have a clear pathway to positive revenue uh, are getting funded. And in the past three months since the triple correction happened, we've seen our members, Blockchain Investors Consortium members, invest millions of dollars in different projects. So the, the bleak market outlook and, and the hesitation that just lingers on because of the crypto <coughs> value and, and, and the investment slowing down is just on the surface. The good deals are still getting funded and, and people are um, still investing. But the philosophy has changed from a quick buck, let me invest my excess crypto that I, I had realized some profits on, but maybe I prefer not to convert to fiat for whatever reasons. Uh, and let me roll it into a different project. That mentality has unfortunately changed. And with that change, you need to think about your revenue model. You need to show long-term value, not just in your tokens, because your tokens, if you create wa value, you create wealth for your token holders, they're gonna appreciate. But on the business side, you need to think about equity appreciation, you need to think about revenue. Um, Having said that, I think I am done with my presentation. 
So thank you for listening to me. I'll take a couple questions since I have a little bit uh, more than two minutes. Any questions? Excellent. If there are no questions, you can find me if you, uh, you want to ask anything one-on-one -on -one after this presentation. Thank you.